All right, here we go. So what's happening now is my screen's being recorded and our class is being recorded. And what we're talking about today is designing an influence map, which kind of shows what you're about as an artist or a designer. So somebody tell me, why would an artist or a designer want to create something like this, a visual influence map? Jose. To show off your personality or your personal design aesthetic, what makes you unique as an artist or a designer? What types of things would you guys put on your map? Somebody else. Yes. Cartoons you watched as a child that you got inspiration from, games you played, um, product packaging, movies that you watched, uh, who your favorite sports uh, celebrity personality is, uh, the things that you're interested in, okay? Because what we're trying to do as a designer is take what we're interested in and combine it with design and make it into this combination, which is you as a unique designer with your own visual communication. So we're making one of these things. And you guys know that already I told you a couple stories about some of the things, the reasons why I have these things on my map. So there's a story about every single one of these little things that we have here. Okay, so what we have here is a blank influence map, and we're going to go through this together because we've already looked online for large images, which I'm going to go through that one more time. So if you guys are unsure how to get your large images, I'm going to do that really quick. So I'm going to go to Google Chrome, and I'm going to go to a Google search. Somebody give me something they want to look for or something that they want to add to their map. What is it? Hot Wheels, yeah. So Hot Wheels might have been your jam when you were a little kid. You played with little cars, right? So Hot Wheels. I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. Now one of the things about Hot Wheels, we're going to go to images now because we're not interested in the 415 million results we got. We're only interested in images. And then what do I need to do next? Because I don't want to just have like images of Hot Wheels that are any size. I want them to be Jamil, what's up? I want to click on tools. And then what do I want to do? Click on size. And then what do I want to look for? Large. Okay, so now I'm only going to get large images, which means that the pixel dimensions here are at least a thousand by something. So maybe I collected Hot Wheels. Maybe I still collect Hot Wheels. There are like grown ups who collect Hot Wheels, right? Or maybe I could find a cool Hot Wheels thing that combines some of my interests. Like I'm like, yeah, I'm all about like Marvel movies. So I'm going to get the Marvel Thanos package of Hot Wheels. Or maybe I'm just really into this vintage logo. That makes me remember when I was a kid and I had all these cool things. I'm just going to go with this car right here. Okay, now this car is really a large image. I doubt I'm going to be able to get it. I'll do this one, this little red car here. So I'm going to click once on this Hot Wheels car and it's going to spin it off onto the side for me. What do I do next? I hold control and I click the actual image and then Jose, what do I do now? Not yet. Okay, so here's a mistake that a lot of people are making. And that, guys, this is review, but it also is a reminder. You can't just drag this over because it won't give me the full size image. So, one of the steps you're missing is that you need to go to this open image and new tab. Yeah, now we're going to go ahead and click on the new tab. And here you see giant Hot Wheels image, right? Now I've actually got that large image. And I'm going to slide this over and I'm going to drag this Hot Wheels car onto the desktop. And now it is saved to the desktop. How do I know it's saved? Because I can see it and I can actually see the car. If it has a little symbol on there that says like web lock or it says something else, uh, we had some problems. So we need to do some, some extra steps. Uh, but what we did was you save the large image onto our desktop. Okay. Now you want to continue to do this for all of the things that you're interested in. I'm going to go ahead and quit out of Google Chrome. Okay, so the actual influence map itself, I created a blank template for everyone. And the first thing we did yesterday, which a lot of you have done this or all of you have done this, is we check down here in our layers palette where it says your name and class period. We double click the T in front of your name and class period and you put your name and you put what class period you're in. So we are period four. And then what do I do now? In Photoshop, after I type something, what do I do to make my type stick? 
What's this guy called right here? So who knows what this is? The move tool. These arrows call the move tool. So now my type is stuck. Now when you guys do this, I want you to do it with all lowercase. Not because it's correct, because it looks cooler. Okay, so we're going to do all of our names and period fours in lowercase. And we're going to ignore that bell because that's only the halfway point. All right, so we got our name and we've got influence map here. And now we need to decide how important these individual things are to us. So here's what I want you to do. If everything I just said, you were like, got it, got it, got it. I know how to do that. I know how to do that. I know how to do everything. I'm good. This is the point where I really want you to review because you might have forgotten these steps. There's a lot of them. Okay, and I'm going to add a new one right now. We're going to add a brand new step. You guys ready? Look at the TV and follow along with me. Here's what we're going to do. Go in the layers palette and we're going to make this so that we can't mess it up. Because there's a lot of layers here and if you start moving things around, we could really mess this up. So what we're going to do is lock the layers to prevent us from doing anything to them. Ready? Watch this. This is brand new. We're going to click once on this top layer that's called influence map. And then we're going to click this little lock button right above it. So we're going to lock that. Now what's happened is it's locked this layer so I can't do anything to it. I can't move it. I can't change it. I can't mess it up. Let's do the same thing with this layer where it says put anything in this. Okay, so we're going to lock it. Where it says as an artist, I'm going to click on that layer. We're going to lock it. Do you guys all got this? You following with me? Yeah, okay, so we're going to lock everything. Lock, 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 except these two things, which we don't need. See layer one and layer two? What are those? Well, one's got a weird thing on it and one's got some strawberries on it so we don't need those we're going to delete them so if you guys have those two layers how do you delete a layer you just click on it and you press delete on your keyboard click on it press delete on your keyboard it goes away layer three copy nine this is the most important layer in this thing because it is the map it's all the boxes we need those so we're going to lock that one as well so we've got all these layers locked you guys good now you can't move them, you can't change them, you can't do anything to them. All right, let's go ahead and do the Hot Wheels one together for our demo. So you guys pick whatever you want to put in your map. Go ahead and go to your desktop. Find something you want to add to your map that you've saved. I've got a watch, I've got some mac and cheese, I've got a puppy, I've got all kinds of stuff here that I'm ready to put in. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this image, the Matchbox car, this is important, down to the Photoshop icon in the dock and let go. Now what it did was it opened the image in Photoshop in a separate box, in a separate document. You see that? So we've got the car is separate from the map. Okay? Now what do I do next? Somebody, t you guys teach me now. What do I do first? Jamil, select all. Select all. Good. What do I do next? Jose. Edit, copy. What do I do next, Nathan? Click on the influence map document now that I copied that. Take the rectangular marquee tool, which is right here. Figure out where I want it to go, right? Okay, so I'm gonna just put the matchbox car in one of these. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag a box with that rectangular marquee tool around that square that I want it to go in. If I want it to be four squares, I would do this. If I want it to be one square, I'm going to do this. So I'll just, I'll just go for four squares. So I'm going to cover four squares with this. Okay, and now what do I do next? Let's go with uh, Mo. What do I do next? Edit. Paste special. Paste into. So now that car is inside that box. Now the cool part by doing it this way is if I take the move tool, I can move the car around, but it's going to stay inside that box. So how do I resize this? Command T. Drake, what do I do now? 
resize it so it can fit inside this box. So you want it to be a little bit bigger than the box, but we want to not crop it in a weird way. So there, that fits nicely. And then I press return. Now I've started my influence grid and I can go ahead and close this and I can go ahead and continue to add things to the map. Okay. Now I'm going to do one more and I'm going to screw this up because I want you guys to know how to fix it. And this is the number one mistake. So I'm about to do this slightly wrong and I'm going to show you all how to fix it. So I'm going to take this watch. <clears throat> well, it's, yeah, I'll take this watch. So I'm going to take the watch down to Photoshop just like we did. So far, nothing different. I'm going to go and select all. I'm going to edit copy. I'm going to go to the blank influence map. And this time, I'm going to purposefully, you guys watch this, because you're going to make this mistake. It's just a matter of when, not if. I'm going to go ahead and drag this box, but I'm going to make it the wrong shape. So I'm going to do that. I wanted this to fit in two boxes, but look what I did. I purposefully made it a bad selection. Okay. Now I'm going to go to edit, paste special, paste into, and look at what has happened. So who has images like this where you're like, oh no, like I can move it around, but I, yeah, I've got a bad selection here. You guys see that? I want you all to look at this mistake so I could show you all how to fix it, okay? So I'm gonna do that thing, I'm gonna go Command T, and I'm gonna start to resize it. The problem is, it's the wrong size, like the whole box is the wrong size, right? So let me zoom out a little bit so we can see that. So we're gonna start resizing it, and no matter what I do, it's in the box, but it's like I really messed up, and now I'm kinda of sad because my grid looks ugly, and I have all these extra little, little places. Because this is a graphic design class, I want you guys used to trying to get things perfect. You don't, in graphic design, there's no such thing as close enough. It has to be perfect or you have to work on it until it's good. So I've zoomed in here and I know what I need to do. Let me show you how to fix it. Here we go, watch this, ready? Look at my layers palette. This is a little confusing because it's super new. Here's the watch. Here's the black box that's called a mask. It means it's going to fit inside of that thing. If I click this empty space in between here, you look what's going to happen. I click this empty space here. It turns into a link. You see a little chain that appears? If I chain these two letters together, now watch what happens now. Now I'm moving it and it's on top of the box. So now what I can do is go, all right, I'm going to make this a little fit a little bit better. So I'm going to go in this corner. I'm going to go Command T. Now when I resize it, I can make it so it fits. I'm still a little bit too big on the right side. Press return, scoot it over a little bit. Now I'm good in that side in that corner. So what do I need to fix? Yeah, the bottom and the side where it overlaps here. So now what I'm gonna do is click the rectangular box, do a better job selecting this time. So I'm gonna go, okay, I wanted this to be in two boxes. So now I'm gonna go two boxes, move this up here, put it where I want it to go. Oh yeah, that's where I wanted it to go in the first place before I messed it up. Then you're gonna go select inverse. Now inverse means opposite, select inverse. So you have everything but that box, and then you're going to press delete. And now you're going to go command D to deselect. Now it fits in the box. Okay, so I wouldn't do that every time you mess up. I would say, oh, I got to go back and fix that later, and I'll help you guys repeat that, or you can watch the video. Okay, so linking this, when you link these together, here's the difference. If they're linked, you move the whole thing. If they're unlinked, you're moving the picture inside of the thing. You guys got that? Okay. Again, you don't need to do that until the end. That's kind of like an advanced thing. You guys are a little bit ahead of my other class. And you're gonna fill up this grid with all your favorite stuff that makes you the person that you are. 
All right, always make sure that you save frequently to your desktop. You're gonna go to File. You can go to Save As if you want and rename it. So I'm gonna call this Fourth Period Influence Map. Save it to your desktop for right now. Bless you. I'll edit that out. Or your sneeze would live forever on YouTube. Or maybe I'll keep it in so that your sneeze lives forever on YouTube. What You say edit it? Okay. No, okay. Leave it in. Leave it in. Keep it in, right? Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording now. If you guys have any other questions, I'm going to help you individually. And yeah, if I think of any other problems, um, how do I get out of here? Oh, stop record.